Okay, so what we're working on today is a replacement of the retract and extend switch for my uh, electric stabilizers in the front of my camper. The rear one has always worked fine. The front one has been iffy since the day I bought it. Oh, here's spider. But uh, it's finally, over the last several outings, crapped out completely. And so I went online to find a replacement for it, and they don't make this switch anymore. It's been superseded by this one, which as you can see, has this nice shield over the top of it. So I'm wondering if they noticed some water infiltration or something behind this switch, and that's why they've come out with this new one. Um, it wasn't terribly expensive, maybe 30 bucks. And sure, this would probably be covered under warranty, but I'm not bringing my damn camper back to the shop for a $30 part that I can most likely change myself. So we're going to remove this right now and see if we see anything. I've had this off one time before, and I don't recall there being anything obvious missing problematic okay well that's interesting all right well we have a wiring diagram and we've got positive and negative red and or red and black I'm assuming that's our battery feed and then I got a yellow and a white wire so what we have on the new one it's a little bit different setup this is a much more open switch, as you can see. Got all these connectors on the back. Uh, wide open. We've got some connectors here. And then we just, on the new one, it's fully potted. Really nice stuff. No uh, significant way that that could get in. Any, any water infiltration could get into this one. But again, I don't see... Really, I don't. there's no damage on this. I don't see anything obviously wrong but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get my tester make sure I have battery here so that I know that it's not that because if it's that then I have other problems and uh, then I'm gonna do a little bit of continuity checking on this switch so I'll be right back all right first we're gonna check see if we got voltage this is easier said than done Hmm. Uh-huh. Well, what do you know? That's interesting. <laughs> Double check it on my battery over here to make sure that it's uh, not my meter. The battery is it's on charge right now, so we're putting 13.57 volts to that. Disconnect these babies. It's going to be fun to chase if this is really the problem. And I have no voltage here. Well, that may be my issue. Interesting. Huh. Well now we got a little bit more work to do. I suppose that's something I should have done before I bought my replacement switch, although I most likely end up going back with the new switch because I like it better with that shield over the top of it um, than this one which is a, not quite as pretty and, and really doesn't have as... it's, it's just not as good. Um, but I don't know why I don't have that. I'm going to go check some fuses, and we shall be back. So I checked the fuse. There is one labeled as a 30, but in its place is a 20 amp fuse called Power Jacks. So I'm assuming that's this. And it has a good fuse in it. And as can be seen, the rear works fine, so 
obviously I have power coming out of that fuse. Now, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Okay, looking at this thing, I'm just thinking that we would use colors that I'm used to for the wiring. The red and black wiring is actually the out to the motor. So of course we don't have, uh, of course we don't have power there. But we'll check to see if we have power here, and I'll bet that will be just ducky. So one moment. Get this back into position. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, it always helps if you actually check the power source. That is correct. Well, look at that, 13.67 volts. And that's positive. So yellow is the positive side and white is the negative side. Because of course that's what color you use. So anyway, well, everybody has a laugh on that because I'm an idiot, but at least I figured it out before I started disassembling everything like I normally don't. So, what I need to decide, given that I've already checked the continuity on this, and we basically have continuity from the red wire here through the unit, I'm going to double check it. Okay, so here's the new switch, a little closer up view of it. It's really nice, got the new cover over the top of it. Very good feeling switch. We've got a red and a black, and a yellow and a blue wire on the back. It's nicely potted. Yeah. Really nice piece. Uh, got some foam backing here for when you screw it onto the camper. And all I'm gonna do here is check the continuity of um, the wires. My guess is the red and the black are positive and negative from the battery and the yellow and the blue are going to be a positive feed from you know to either the high the, the raise or the lower. So what I should be able to do I've got my tester on continuity so when it has continuity it'll beep when it doesn't it won't. So if I can do this all right, so the blue wire is for extend, and my guess is here, if I do this, the yellow wire is for retract. Yep. So that's how one of these should work. You got your positive and negative, which will go from the battery, and then one of these each to extend or retract circuit on the um, stabilizers. So once we get that changed, I'm going to test the old one and see if that's actually still what's going on. Let's see if I can figure out exactly what failed. I think these colors are completely different than the way the old one is wired. So if I assume that yellow and blue are the incoming Okay, that gives me a retract, but does it give me... Okay, it does work. I mean, either way. So, I can use either set of these to get what I need. So, what I'm debating is I think that I have some spade connectors, which I can crimp on here and uh, keep this intact. But I may just cut it and use butt connectors because then I know it's never going to come off. So I got to go see what I dig around and see what I have. I guess the other thing that I haven't done necessarily is try to see if I can. Yeah, I want to go get my tester leads and run power to the motor to make sure that that still works too.
Okay. This is uh, this is entertainment at its finest, I'm sure. Okay, we still have 13 volts. Okay, so the motor works. Finally, good lord. And tells me this switch is utterly suspect because it is doing nothing. So, what I am going to do, uh, not that it matters, I am going to strip these babies. Because I am going to use butt splices, crimped butt splices. Because I can. And I don't want this thing to come apart internal to the wall if I put another set of spade connectors in there. Let's see how my stripper works. Ooh, I like it. And everybody needs one of these babies. They're about 20 bucks, but that is pretty slick. So I got some nice medium gauge crimp on connectors, which I will hopefully be able to use successfully here. Sometimes I question what they're doing here. Since I'm not grounded, that won't hurt anything. Neither will that. But I'm only going to do one at a time here. Man, that's slick. Okay, so these are actually a little bit bigger than my 14s, but I have a solution. Be right back. So I was at AutoZone the other day, and I needed a couple of more. I needed a couple of dollars more to get my <clears throat> credit to my 20 bucks, and I said, "Self, you can never have too many buck connectors," and that's what I bought. A bunch of different sized and different gauge butt connectors and now you're coming in rather handy all right pretty wild that they're using this is probably a that's probably a 14 gauge almost. And this I want to say is maybe a 12. That's a big wire. And the switch comes with stuff that, if that's 16, it's a day. So we're gonna basically hook everything up kind of like we found it.
What I am going to do right now, because I've seen sillier stuff, let's see if I can hold these in here. Test this bad boy. Of course. Yeah. So, one of the sets of wires has to be backwards in order for this new switch to work. But, at least we figured it out. So the blue goes to the yellow and the yellow goes to the white. Because, why not? Let's see if I got it right. Extend. Retract. Perfect. So, now that we got that all done, I think I'm going to go get a little bit of electrical tape, a couple of tie wraps, clean that up, and uh, get it reinserted back into the into the coach. Now this is just a thrill a minute, I'm certain. But, just a quick lesson in troubleshooting in replacement of an electrical switch. And I'm not doing this to look to seal it any better because it is, you know, on the outside, we've been in a lot of rain. I don't see any water intrusion through that, so the little foam on it worked pretty good. I'm really doing it strictly to keep this together. So, to reduce the movement inside of that. And that's why I'm also going to run this back together and do this. In front and behind the splices. So again, if randomness happens, cut wire grip. Don't really cut it. Won't cut a tie wrap. There we go. And we have some further issues with this baby. We should be able to not insert it because it's bigger than the last one. <laughs> okay, well there's small issue number two. I'm gonna have to go get a little saw and open up the hole as this is a little larger than that. The other thing I noticed, the reason I had to wire it backwards is it's labeled backwards. So, who knows, at least it works, but now we're going to go notch that out. Now I've got many small saws, this is one of my favorites for just about all around everything, but the blade's a little harsh. I'm going to see if I can get it with this little baby, because this has some really fine teeth on it, and I think it'll do less damage, just from a chew it up perspective, Clunk. if I can keep it square, and I think I can. Yep, there we go. That's how wide we gotta go. Trying to keep it centered. in the back. Out the back. And there we 
there she is. And there she is. Good. Last check. And she works. It's a little humid out here today. You might be able to tell. All right. And that's a success. Okay, so here is the switch as it came out. And we should have basically continuity from one side of this to the other side. There. Aha. Uh -huh. That may be one of our problems. Okay. This is kind of, if it starts working now, it's going to be because it's gone intermittent again, like it had before, so... Yeah, it's now been bumped around enough where I've, if I reinstalled this, it would start sort of working again. But, I mean, it, there's really not much to this thing, so... Since I've already replaced it with the better unit, I'm going to pop it apart, take a look at what we got in here. Kind of looks like there's just a... See if I can stab myself in the hand. There we go. One side. side. Oh wow. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. That is some really dirty stuff. As you can see what we've got here is this just moves your 12 volt positive and negative from one side to the other side so it just takes it from the center and then switches it. it they all go out here so your incoming is here your out is here and it's either positive negative or negative positive depending on what position these are in and I don't know if you can see all that crud in there combined with all of this there was just no chance of that consistently being continuous. So, obviously, this is corroded, which is the main issue that I was having with it. Because as you can see, once I started scratching it again, it started working. Um, and I could clean this up, I think. And, and these are... And these are spring loaded so that you got your you know you got some continuity but again they're not clean they, I mean it's not shiny at all um, it's not sealed as you can see although it was in the coach you know it was behind this foam and there was no evidence of any water intrusion or anything like that so that was my problem was the corrosion you know internal I mean, you can even see this is where the center is where it picks up its positive and negative from the battery and then it distributes it to these 
And actually that center is probably the worst piece of this whole thing. Uh, that is, uh, that is pretty crummy. Well, at least now I know what the failure mode was and, uh, you know, I could have, I guess, taken this apart and cleaned it and put it back together and resealed it and saved the 30 bucks. But I like putting the best stuff possible in it and this switch just never felt terribly good as far as that goes so since my rear one hasn't ever hasn't failed yet and it's never even thought about failing I'm guessing that it is clean uh, but I'm gonna put this back together and save the pieces just in case I ever have to get that rear one going and maybe I can do that but I'll probably when I have to if it does come to it I'll put a new one on it because I like the new design with the outside shroud and the completely potted um, design I mean it's just it's a lot better for external service so that's what you got so we have a new improved with shroud automatic stabilizer jack switch so hope you found that helpful if you ever have an issue like that for yourself and uh, as I keep fixing things on this little thing, I will be putting up more videos. If you like my channel, please uh, give, it a th give it a like, subscribe, give a thumbs up to the video if you really liked it. And I uh, hope you all have a good day. Take care.